come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey there, and thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you are ready for it or not. Hey, do us a favor, wherever you found us, go over there and hit that like or the subscribe or that little the bell icon to get notifications whenever we come out with a new episode. Because all that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you. And we like you. So, I mean, hey, let's, let's invite more people onto this. You know, as yeah, we, uh, you're trying to butter them up to review and, like, and we like you just before you go and review us. Yeah, all that stuff. We want to become the fastest growing podcast in the universe. Universe, universe, universe. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by <coughs> Michaela. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Michaela. <laughs> what do we watch tonight as my final movie before I die? We watched Pumpkinhead. Ooh, from, from the, the year. year. 1988. And directed yes. by Stan Winston himself. Stan Winston. That name sounds vaguely familiar. Why would I know that name? Uh, he's done special effects for any major movie you've probably ever watched in your life. Yep. Jurassic mm. Park, Aliens, anything uh, James Cameron for the most part. Yeah, I mean, we're talking um, like the um, substantial uh, visual. Well, not so much visual effects. <laughs> we're, um, we're talking like makeup and mechanical effects. Uh, primarily, it seems like mostly mechanical effects work, right? I mean, that's what you remember yep. him for. It's like he engineered some of the most astounding visual things that you have ever seen in your life. Uh, may he rest in peace. Um, Pumpkinhead, to me, shares a lot in common with Aliens. Like, this seems like uh, Aliens was the R&D work for Pumpkinhead. True or false? Yeah, this is like an albino xenomorph. Yeah. Yeah, um, but before there was an albino xenomorph, an actual albino xenomorph <laughs> was an alien resurrection. Resurrection, yeah. Uh, the baby, the weird white baby xenomorph yeah, with boobs. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to remember what year that came out. <laughs> well, the uh, this 93? is um, uh, 97. 97. 97 was alien resurrection. Uh, this was 88. Aliens was 86. Um, but yeah, I mean the queen alien, you know, and the puppeteering and, and all that. Winston they worked on. He designed it, right? Or no, Cameron yeah. designed yeah. that. Did Cameron design that himself? That mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But I'm sure there were heavy hands from both in it. And and Winston clearly, like you know, had a hand, in his, especially probably in the engineering. If if Cameron did a design. Winston was the one who figured out how to actually like um, articulate that thing. That motherfucker built a goddamn T Rex for Jurassic Park. Like when you go back, when you think yeah. of Jurassic Park, because we all talk about it, and I think we did an episode on this. You can go back and listen to our Jurassic <laughs> Park episode. But everybody, you know, remembers that movie as being like the, uh, you know, one of the flagship movies in the invention of uh, computer graphics, a photorealistic right, computer CG. graphics. But we all forget that there were giant fucking dinosaurs on that set. Yeah. Cause there's fewer CG uh, shots in that movie than you think there are. Uh, there's actually big ass fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. I think Stan Winston's effects stand the test of time better than pretty much anyone else's. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I yeah. mean, he had a career that, uh, well, we just did Zoltan Hound of Dracula, which he did some makeup effects on in the 70s, and he became acclaimed for a TV movie he did uh, makeup for. It was called uh, Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Yeah. Have he won an Emmy. Yeah. I've seen it. You have seen it. I haven't seen Gargoyles. Seen Gargoyles. How oh, is Gargoyles? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not good. Oh. <laughs> but, it's, but it's fucking hilarious. But the makeup. Like, they're the, the, just. You should watch it. It's hilarious. But it's there's not a comedy. There's ass slapping gargoyles. It's. <laughs> is it people who not. turn into gargoyles? Is that what goes on? No, they find gargoyles. On the roof and the of people a... get attacked. No, they're in a cave. Oh. And there's a whole thing and they talk weird. And they did something in the movie where they 
I think they slowed down their uh, slowed down or sped up all the footage of the gargoyles to make them look weirder and all that shit. So it just looks weird. Uh, Wait, it's so, something else. So why isn't this on the freak show yet? <laughs> it's a TV movie. It's a TV movie. <laughs> I don't care. Colin I don't said. care. Uh, it's it's care. a TV movie and it was awesome. <laughs> it's something else. So I I I, I don't know. Unless you know, you I'll stick all... to my animated gargoyles voiced by Keith David. Thank no, you very much. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's far better. But did it did it win an Emmy? And I wouldn't be surprised if it did. But did it win an Emmy? No. Gargoyles from Stan Winston did. There you, I, go. I, you know what? Honestly, Sean, I feel like animated gargoyles might have like gotten some like it, award for animation. I think it did. Or writing or something like that. Writing for kids. I think yeah. it did. Well, um, the other, so, I mean, yeah, obviously he had a great career, um, in, in makeup effects work. Uh, he then, uh, this was his first, uh, I believe, uh, sitting in the director's chair first time. Yes, out. it was. Okay. He also, he did make several other things, at least one other film, correct? Yes. And that was, wait for it, uh, ladies let me and check. gentlemen. I didn't do as much Stan Winston research as much as I just did General Pumpkin. Okay, well, I'm going to jump ahead and say he also did the Michael Jackson's Ghosts uh, music video in 3D, right? That played it like yes, he did. And he also did Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time, I think. I'm, I don't know if I'm positive yep. on this. But uh, the other okay, feature... He directed a movie uh, re- not long after this that I think is going to have to come to the freak show. It's called A Gnome Named Norm. <laughs> there it is. In front of it. <laughs> I've heard a- of this. Yeah. No. I've, no. I have heard of this. Yes. No. We're going to have to. So no. Like a gnome yeah. named yeah. Gnorm. Yeah. A gnome named Norm. Yep. No. Awesome. I can't watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. Well, it was obviously. Uh, you've made us watch a lot of unwatchable I'm having, stuff. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, flashbacks! Look at this image in particular. Yeah, I well, know. it looks like uh, you know it's another animatronic. <laughs> Look, right. uh, I don't need sexy creature. gnomes. I don't. Yeah. Is well, that sexy? Yeah. Oh, he's kissing a lady in this picture. I know, but it's not sexy. It kind of looks think like something's um, happening. They, they want it to be sexy. It looks like one of the uh, the creatures from the Dark Crystal. It does crystal. Look like she wants it. It does. It does look like Dark Crystal. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. Anthony Michael Hall's in this. Okay, yeah. guys, we have to watch this. Well, yeah, we do. Oh um, boy. And then and, and then a Christian. And then gargoyles. Yeah, and then he never directed it good. Um, <laughs> so it's a double features, some early Stan Winston shit. Yeah, it's just it's 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 still wild to me that like you know yeah renowned makeup effects guy. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess this is why you want to do, you know, if he's going to direct a movie, it's, you figure the reason, you know, if this is going to be a, uh, a visual or sorry, a, a mechanical or practical effects heavy movie, right? Mm-hmm. Pumpkinhead is going to be, that's the promise that you're, that you're made, um, with him in the director's chair. Uh, yeah, the other guy, the I think that maybe we should mention his name is a guy named Tom Woodruff Jr. Are you familiar with and, him? And Alec Gillis too. Okay, well, um, explain who they are and why we should care. Well, the special effects guys, but most notably to this one, they did uh, Alien. Well, not the first one. No, I mean, Aliens for for Cameron and everything. So, I mean, they're all used to this. uh, I mean, they've all worked together before. Well, but there's Tom Woodward Jr. is in Pumpkinhead. He is Pumpkinhead. He is Pumpkinhead. Yeah, he's the guy in the costume. special effects heavyweights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, they work for Stan Winston, Alec Gillis, and Tom Woodruff. Later on, you know, I think right now they have amalgamated dynamics, I think, is their current, you know, they're still Hollywood special effects guys. But I think Tom Woodruff at this point has logged more time in an alien suit in movies than <laughs> uh, anyone else. I mean, I think he's the go-to guy. Like, if you're going to do an alien movie, because I think uh, it was Alien 3 was the first one where he was in the suit. And then I don't know if he was the alien versus predator or he had something to do with the uh, alien resurrection. I mean, like, you know, he's your alien guy, but he is in the suit for pumpkin head. Um, when pumpkin head is a suit creature, how many times did you, um, I mean, um, were you able to tell on this watch when, you know, like, Oh, that's a guy in a suit. That's the animatronic head. That's the full body puppet. That's the, you know, Mm. Not really. It, it all seemed pretty smooth. Like, mm-hmm. <coughs> excuse me. 
But uh, you know, you can see every now and again. You're like, okay, well, they wouldn't they wouldn't need a guy in a suit for that shot. So that's the animatronic shit. Like yeah, that. But, and like be, like being that it was my first watch, I couldn't really tell. I feel like if you rewatch it over and over, it'd be easier to pinpoint which is which. But I thought it was pretty smooth overall. Yeah, you can also uh, you can tell the shots where the uh, the legs are like the feet are like bolted to the ground. It's like yeah, he's not gonna be walking in this shot. Sean, was this you your first time watching it? Uh, we did figure it out. This is my first time watching Pumpkinhead. Okay, so uh, you've I seen have, Blood I, Wings, though. So I've, I've seen Blood Wings, but I have not seen the first Pumpkinhead. <laughs> Which I think Blood Wings is the one where you can see the tennis shoes in a couple shots, right? I think so. Like, you can straight up see Tom Woodruff wearing Nikes in a few shots as Pumpkinhead. <laughs> and, I and one of those made it to the back of the DVD cover, even. Oh, Ooh. I always wonder some of those, you know, some of those shots, it's like, you know, because those movies were released on video in uh, four by three square, right? But they were composed oh, yeah. to be seen in an eight, eight, 185 to one, you know, so you would cut off the top and bottom of the frame. And I always like when that shit happens, it's always like, what well, did they compose for 185 to one and the feet were below that. But when you took the mat off and you put it on home video, it's like, hey. That guy's got tennis shoes on. <laughs> right? Oh know? my god! Why is that boom mic? Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything comes back in. Yep. Um, There's an onset. Hold on, I have an onset photo from Blood Wings where you can like see the shoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Nice. It's yeah. like the big swish. Like you can't miss it because the <laughs> yeah. swish is like half the side of the shoe. <laughs> That's like a great Nike commercial. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stan Winston. And when I'm working on movies, I like my feet really, to be comfortable. It really does look like a Nike ad. <laughs> Doesn't it? Because he's yeah, coming re- like, guy. <laughs> and then at the end, it he really just does. runs away. <laughs> well, tell me, ladies and gentlemen, how this movie could be improved by employing computer graphics. It could not. None whatsoever. <laughs> it literally could not be. <laughs> but it I mean, would take you out of the movie, actually. Well, wait, computer graphics from now or computer graphics from back then? Computer graphics from now, because, you know, somewhere out there stuck in development hell is somebody trying to remake Pumpkinhead. I'm sure I'm I'm positive that somebody has thought about it and they're like, no, we're going to do a completely CG Pumpkinhead. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be able to do a bunch of things that the first one couldn't. I'm sure it's on some (laughs) idea board at Blumhouse right now. Yeah, I was going to say, you you stop. (laughs) Yeah. your, your right? shit, Blumhouse. God damn it, Holly. Now that you said it, tomorrow we're going to get like a teaser poster for Blumhouse's Pumpkinhead. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, but it's not going to be anything like Pumpkinhead. It, mm-hmm. We're going to just take the name and strip it down, take any meaning away. Yeah. Make our own movie. Yeah. Pretty much. They have a redesigned character and all that. But it's like, I mean, this obviously is one of the movie's iconic movie monsters. Um, I think, I mean, I think so. This goes on the, uh, you know, the, yeah. the wall. The- I mean, it, yeah, it's it's one of those, those, like, I've never actually watched it, but I know Pumpkinhead. Like, mm-hmm. you right. just know Everyone it. knows that yeah. monster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, that's a good question since Holly and Sean, this is your first time seeing it tonight um, and knowing just through pop culture what Pumpkinhead looks like. Um, this is one of those movies where you, um, where they're trying to hide it from you, right? Cause the first time audience hasn't seen it, it's, you know, not in the poster art for the original movie, uh, which I think was, a uh, just a pumpkin, right? Like these clawed mm-hmm. hands holding a pumpkin. So, uh, um, I mean, what, how does that, uh, if, if you know what it looks like, cause I mean, now I guess we do, um, mm-hmm. were you frustrated? Does that frustrate you or... Like what's the experience? Not, not really. I feel like it's I feel like it's like the first time you saw like, you know, Iron Man and you're waiting for to see him in the suit. It's like you know what it's going to look like, but you're just waiting for the moment that you actually see it. So it's not like a suspense thing. It's just like you're you're just kind of excited for it, you know? Yeah, cuz it's it's not when we do get to see it, it's not disappointing. Yeah. Like it's, it's looking good and doing the things you want it to do. So, yeah. I, I mean, I personally had no frustration with it. I knew exactly what it looked like, but it's just cool to see that thing doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think too, for a movie that only runs 86 minutes, you do get to see him a lot. You do. You do. Yeah. You get, he gets a lot of screen time. <clears throat> He's almost standing in doorways going. Yeah. I'm Hello. Yeah. yeah. Like what yeah. up? There were a couple I just times to push some saloon doors open. You it's know? true. He there's really, yeah. 
there is a lot of there is a lot of like here I am moments, you know. It's like yeah. I'm pumpkin head. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he just needs to do the hands. Be like, hello, right? Yeah, but I re- I mean, as a uh, well, I wasn't a monster kid, right? Those are the whatever early. You were probably a monster no a mon- kid. monster kid. When you say that uh, horror fan, like that's a specific age group that grew up in like yeah. the '60s watching. But I was like the '80s monster kid, so I was like, I probably saw this when I was 15 years old, and it was new, right? And yeah. That was always kind of the thing because in the 80s and we didn't have visual effects, you couldn't, uh, there were limitations to what the creatures usually could do, right? Too, you see too much of it and you're like, that's a guy in a suit and therefore not mm. scary anymore. And so filmmakers will always employ these tactics to try and like delay how long, you know, bef- how long it would take before you actually see it. Or when you see it, you only see a little bit and pieces of it. But mm-hmm. Pumpkinhead actually does. This isn't like in our, you know, uh, 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 it actually delivered. You know, it actually does yeah. give you like good long looks at its monster. You right? know, and like, here's its face. Stare at this for ten minutes. It's they're like, confident in their design because you see every <laughs> angle of it. You see it fully lit. You see it up close, far away. Yeah. I yeah, they like that. it. Yeah. And, uh, well, fully lit. I know I, what I liked about it, uh, even more this time. I mean, the, the stylistic choices that they make, but basically brings a little lightning storm with him wherever he goes. So yeah. he's always and like fog rolls in and there's a lightning storm. Yep. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's lit by like flickers, you know, of, of stuff that is, you know, separate him from the background and, and that, um, so he has like leaves whirling around him too. Okay. So you guys, did you guys also get some like sleepy hollow deja vu watching this? Yeah, like, it, for like, like an so the first time I saw this movie, it was like a shitty VHS, and then like this time I was like, "This is a beautiful movie." It is really beautiful. I, I there was so many things about this movie. Obviously, you know, we we talked about that. There's a lot of alien vibes, but as far as like storyline and aesthetically, it's very Sleepy Hollow, like. A lot of similarities, mm-hmm. which I came later. But you're saying just as far as the uh, the atmosphere is like heavily fall um, forestry, um, fog. yeah, fog For reds, sure. <clears throat> reds, oranges, purples. The lights like are the like extreme. Yeah, the color palette because it's like, and this is I think why if you you know uh, for me growing up in the I didn't see it in the theater. I saw it on tape, and reds on VHS would always blow out and be all smeary right and uh, mm-hmm. even in dvd didn't do reds very well i mean because they're intense reds it's like the whole screen is red you know or it's orange or it's blue i mean those are like the primary colors it seems like of uh of this movie but when you actually can see it in high definition it's like oh my god now i can see what they were shooting for <laughs> when they mm-hmm. first did it um mm-hmm. the guy who did this movie who uh was a cinematographer is a brazilian guy named uh, I, I hope i'm not butchering his name boyan Bozelli, right and this was one of the first movies that he did and he's had a very long career but you would know him because he also did the ring uh he did a cure for wellness he did uh the lone ranger oh, so he does he does uh he's got the, that look yeah and uh he just did underwater so i mean the guy is still you know so he's got there. that 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 very green yucky water look is yeah. is his green. palette Kind of, yeah. But the yeah. ring, the Murky. ring looks very different from from this movie, right? It I does. mean, yes. And those Gore Verbinski movies, they have that kind of clean antiseptic, like you know, but nasty, moldy green <laughs> kind of right color. Right. Um, but yeah, this I think, yeah, the look of this movie, just the atmosphere is like so thick. Yeah. Uh, in the just the visual design of this movie and its lighting and its composition and its uh, uh, production design. Did we figure out who the production designer was? Oh, Cynthia K. Charette. There you go. I don't know who she is. Bravo. Well no, done. I don't either, but yeah. bravo. Well done, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every has... frame of this movie was like painterly in its design and its thoughtfulness. Yeah. Well, like, yes. Colin, Colin, like you were saying, like it looks thick, and I, I really appreciate that considering that it's supposed to take place in the South, and the South has very thick air in general. Like they have high humidity, and it just it, it works. Like you, you, you feel like you probably wouldn't be able to breathe very well in this atmosphere. You know, that's the only way I'm going to describe Pumpkinhead from now on. It's like, yo, that movie's thick. <laughs> Everything about it thick. <laughs> Yeah. Is it the South? Do you think, or is this, um, like the, uh, if for, I was thinking that this was like, um, I don't know where it's the, uh, you know, like the Ozarks area or, or what are we talking about? The, um, I looked in, 
IMDb or Wikipedia do not specify where this takes place at. Okay, so, so it could California. be Appalachia. Well, it was shot in California. I guess that's shot in California. But Appalachia sounds like it could be the thing. Yeah, there's hollers. You know, you got to go somewhere where yep. there's hollers. Um, yeah, could be Kentucky or it could be uh, somewhere in New York or Pennsylvania. Or you ever been like in that. a holler? Uh, I not. No, not well, that I know of. Yeah, no. Well, what I is have. it? <laughs> Is it so? Correct me if I'm wrong. A holler, basically, for those of us in the Midwest who don't know what a holler is, Holly, help us out. It's basically if you're on one side of a, so it's basically a big valley, right? And from one exactly. side to the other, people would holler at each other, and that yes, became a, ri- a river valley. Yes. Okay. You holler across. Yeah. Yep. So that's he knew a Razorback holler. I love that. <laughs> the witch <laughs> in this movie swamp witch we get swamp witches swamp witch we do swamp yeah. witch <laughs> scary Good house. Fucking... wait should we explain the plot that gets us to the swamp witch yeah. first yeah let's talk yeah. about it <laughs> so <laughs> i i brought a movie about kid murder i know that's a real shocker to you guys <laughs> damn oh. you gotta vent against these kids <laughs> so lance Henriksen, single dad Work in a countryside grocery store in and, the Great Depression, apparently. Yeah, the Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl, happening. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're like all kids over are the literally United wearing States. potato sacks. Yeah. Like literally a whole family of kids wearing potato yeah. sacks. Yeah. Poor Blossom. Yeah. Maya oh. Bialik herself potato sacking it up. <laughs> uh, they, they run this countryside grocery store. Um, some teens from the city that are going to go up to a cabin in the woods for the weekend with their dirt Fucking bikes stop by to gawk at the local people basically and take yeah. pictures of them like they're fucking photojournalists or something. This is basically um, uh, deliverance without the banjo playing at the beginning. <laughs> right. Uh, and then one of the douchebags has been having some road sodas on the way there. So they go riding dirt bikes around the country store and they just fucking nail this kid with their dirt bikes. Yeah. Did, Holly, did you think the dog was going to die? <laughs> yes. Yes, I really did. I started to get nervous. I was like, we need to stop watching movies where animals get hurt because I can't take it. It's like taking a toll on me. And then the kid dies instead. I'm like, okay. We're good. <laughs> I, can, you're like, I can work with this. Yeah, I got it. It's good. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The kid takes off after the dog. This kid looks like like a poor man's Jonathan Lipnicki, basically. He's super uh, cute. Yeah, he was pretty cute, good. He's a cute kid. Yeah, he just gets nailed by this bike. Uh, Joel, the guy who's been having drinks while he was driving, says, I'm on probation. I've been drinking. I can't get caught. Uh, and he splits from the scene, and everyone else eventually leaves, except for Steve, who decides to stay behind That's until his brother. Lance Hendrickson comes back. Yeah. The brother At least they decided to stay behind. Yeah. 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 It didn't help him out though. He was the fern killed by Pumpkinhead. Yeah. Bro. Well, the uh the initial scenes in the movie which set up the relationship between the father and the kid, I think are uh important because uh, it like this movie really does kind of give you that um you know, it establishes that bond. You know, it's like you know that this isn't like a perfect relationship. The mother is dead, apparently. Uh, uh, her name was Lynn, I gather, because he talks mm-hmm. to her at her grave. Um, but it's like he's a loving father, single father, left behind. You know, to to man, you know manage the store and take care of the kid. But uh, he's also like stern with the kid. You know, he, you know. So it's like this feels like a kind of. Uh, I like that the filmmakers kind of give, you know, they're trying to make this a little three dimensional. Yeah. yeah. Right. And man, that, that scene where he's washing the kid's hand and talking about like uh, one of my grandmother used to wash my, you know, like her skin was so the tissue was so soft. It was like tissue paper or whatever. His skin was like, I remember <laughs> that to this day, the idea of uh, old people's hands feeling like tissue paper. Um, yeah, it was, it was really effective. I was pretty sad. I mean, I made a joke that I was glad that the kid died instead of the dog, but I was actually really sad when this kid died. I was like, I wasn't expecting to feel, feel much during this movie but i was legitimately sad i was like man that's a fucking bummer movie <laughs> yeah well, another like set set and production design note is that like when the dog runs off after the dirt bikes the dog is like the same color as like the tall grass yeah so it really makes you think the dog is gonna get hit yeah yeah it has a, a feeling of tragedy which i think is uh something that these type of movies need 
and this one does very well. I mean, it, it, it kind of nails this kind of thing where uh, yeah. you, you feel the accident coming, you know, uh, because he's showing yeah. you, I mean, Stan Winston is, you know, it's a, everyone's surprised, I suppose. I don't know. Maybe learn from the best, right? He was working with James Cameron and those kind of guys. Right. Uh, I think all know. the filmmakers he got to work with before directing his own, that's the best education you can get right there. Yeah. Right. And maybe had some input or, you know, whatever, uh, uh from these guys, but, um, yeah, just the setup of how. You know, you're seeing these, uh, well, we say they're kids. They're like in their twenties or the dirt. They're bringing dirt bikes with them that go off into the, in a rent a cabin somewhere, city interlopers. And, uh, we yeah. just going to kind of feel the, uh, you know, you're seeing them racing around. It's like, Oh God, you know, it's like, we know that something bad's going to happen and there's nothing you can do to stop it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until mm-hmm. it actually happens. <laughs> and then, yeah, they all leave. I mean, they leave, but it's like, uh, I mean, cause this is setting up like a moral um, um, you know, dynamic in the movie, right? Uh, your guy, Joel, he's the asshole, right? He freaks out basically because we find out he's got, um, like a prior, right? He was involved in an accident that where somebody else got injured. And so he's like, this is, he hit another, he hurt another kid at some point. Or some yeah. girl. This guy's yeah. a fucking menace yeah. to society. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, I'm not going down for this. And so his first initial reaction is we got to cover it up. We got to, you know, I'm not getting caught. We're not going to acknowledge that it even happened. And he's taking off with his girlfriend, Kim. Uh, and then the rest of them, I believe are like, basically on the side of good here. They're like, something bad is happening. We have to, you know, take care of this, but they're out in the middle of nowhere. And this kind of is where you get that atmosphere, right? It's like, who do you rely on when you're out in the mountains and there's no one around? I mean, you assume there's a sheriff or something, but there's no phone. So they're like, well, go get help at the cabin. There's a phone. So all of them take off, just leaving this one guy back behind to watch over the kid. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's like uh, so. What's he gonna do? I mean, when the when the shop owner, when Lance Henriksen gets back, he's like, these kids killed him, and then they left him. <laughs> I gotta get him because <laughs> uh-huh. that's the only real outcome that uh, that would satisfy him. He, it turns out he saw uh, this creature pumpkin head when he was a kid. We get a cold open where he, we kind of get glimpses of the thing as young Ed Harley sees the uh, the creature wandering around in the you know, whatever the foggy woods killing some guy who comes knocking on the door in the middle. And it basically sets up what the movie's going to be. Yeah. This, mm-hmm. yeah, this cold open is what I thought I was going to see when I went to go see it comes at night. Like you've got your neighbor frantically pounding on the door being like, please like show me some compassion and let me in. And the person on there says like, I'm sorry, I really can't. I have to protect my family. That's mm-hmm. basically the cold open. Yeah, but I mean, if Pumpkinhead had shown up and it comes at night, uh, it would have been better. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I don't know if they make these type of movies anymore. I mean, uh, the uh, I mean, because you know we're saying a special effects guy directed it. There is that kind of um, you know, it's trying. Part of its agenda is to try and make you believe that this artificial thing is uh, a, a real life moving creature right so he employs like all sorts of like you know he's going to track the camera past this church where the thing's moving inside and you know all of these things that gives it weight um and makes it look like it's really there you know um spinley maybe i don't i don't know if i believe that it necessarily had the strength to do some of the things that it was doing but i mean it was just like i bought that it was a three-dimensional thing and it's there and like you got a duck to get around it and you got to you know Right. And that it is separate because they, they do enough shots to establish that it is because um, uh, we all realize we're watching a movie that it is a separate entity, that it's not always like hooked up to something as a machine and all that. Like you see it by itself separately out. So they're not always blocking off shots so you can't see it. Sometimes they give it the full thing, which is nice. That scene where it um, confronts, oh, is the name Bunt? The, the Wallace Bunt. kid, the uh, the one of the, you know, kids that lives in the, he's like the one of the uh, the mountain kids, uh, yeah. hides in a closet. And the hill people. Pumpkinhead fucks with him. You know, he like, he hides in the closet. We're in the closet with him. Pumpkinhead this is my, one of my favorite scenes in this movie. Because why? Maybe because it felt, maybe because it felt so much like Alien, but um, I like the, uh, I like what they did with the monster in that, where he's looking through the closet and everything, and then he swings the clothes back and gets his face in there. 
um, and kind of hisses at him. I thought it looked, it was cool. That's the stuff that you want to see the monster doing. And it like, I, you know, I was watching it, you know, knowing that that was coming and knowing that the points of articulation where that thing had to meet, you know, or had to hit. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, how in the fuck are they, you know, like how you're puppeteering this thing from off camera and it has to give the impression of like, oh, okay, I know he's in there. I'm going to turn around and ah, I got you and then bring your face right down into his face, you know, and you got to know, it, you know, they're blind when they're doing this, right? They're like, yeah. well, we got to, how about here? Like how many takes did it, did it take them to get that shot? I thought the part where he's like walking through the like church was really impressive because you see him like duck and crouch through multiple doorways. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah that was really cool. Well, in addition, Pumpkinhead also has a personality. Um, right. I mean, did you think that did this come across for you guys? I thought he kind of took on the personality of whoever he was kind of bound to. Yeah. In what way? I mean, like what specific, um, how do you mean? I mean, I feel like he starts to look more like Lance Henriksen at the end. Right? Did his face change? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. swear it did. Uh, just, yeah, right? it just making sure yeah. I, just making sure I saw that because I'm like, his yeah. face is different. I was second guessing that too. I no, was no, like, no, wait. No. <laughs> Not um, I am sorry. I know Lance Henriksen's um the the monsters. That's, no, yeah. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's yeah. what you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. 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 It starts yeah. to look no. like Lance Henriksen okay. by the end of yeah. the movie. It made it yeah. look like Lance Henriksen. Mm-hmm. But when yeah. I saw that the first time, I was like had I thought I missed something and that he had always looked like that. I was like, wait, right. did they change the face? Right. Yeah, I, it confused me for a second. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a nice subtle little touch there that they do. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, a and personality. Swamp Witch. The way? Oh yeah, we were, were we doing all this yes. before we got to Swamp Witch. Yeah. <laughs> well, just real quick uh, before we get to Swamp Witch, I mean, like his personality goes, I mean, like this thing, you know, I mean, we're saying, we're, you know, they're taking this inarticulate thing articulating it puppeteering it around and giving it like the breath of life right for uh these screen magicians are doing this for us and it has like it toys with people it gets Mm. glee out of toy it's cruel you know uh it actually speaks i don't know in the sound mix that i had going on tonight like i heard it say steve and you know several other uh words and it you know it's like oh really yeah it does yeah i didn't hear any of that it has a little bit of a vocabulary, but I mean, it has a, a distinct, you know, cool toying with its victim personality. It likes to take the, you know, the, the chain off of a motor and dangle it. Oh, in front yeah. of you. you know, it's fucking with them. Right. I don't know if that's a little mm-hmm. bit of Freddy Krueger leftover because that was going on in the 80s at that time. And you had to give uh, your, your, your horror villains that, you know, some type of personality like that. But I thought it came across, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he, he, he set a trap for them with that bike. Like, he took the yeah. chain off and then set the bike up there for them <laughs> to do it. So, yeah, he's fucking with them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was the moment that I was like, oh, he's, like, aware. He's not just, like, on a, he's not just, like, a robotic thing on a mission. Like, he's aware of what he's doing. He's got, like, a strategy. So, why don't you tell me, what yeah. is Pumpkinhead? What is this creature? It's a vengeance demon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vengeance demon. All right, yeah. uh, copyright twenty twenty seven in a free show, just in case. <laughs> well, we can I, do we can do the mockbuster and just call it Vengeance Demon. Guess what there the, the original Asylum film version? Guess what the original title was? Vengeance Demon. Vengeance the Demon. Yeah, I've actually what? seen a poster because I think uh, if memory serves, this movie might have gotten delayed a little bit because I remember a poster that had vengeance the demon written on it and then it was recalled and then it was called Pumpkinhead. even though in the movie they call it Pumpkinhead, uh there's a poem at some point that some of the kids are saying as they're trying to torment you know this is the thing that the kids torment other kids with in order to get them to behave if you're not right you act well pumpkin head's gonna come for you so i know we've had uh movies based off many things this is the first on the freak show we've had based off a poem like actual in the credits Based off a poem by blah blah blah, it's got to be right. I think so. Unless you get, unless know. you count like Edgar Allan Poe stuff, but I don't think that's made it to the well, future. Sure. Um, so I was watching the commentary for this movie at some point, and they said because I was like, "Where I've never heard this poem." Right? They say it in the in the movie, but apparently yeah. it was like you know some friend of the screenwriter uh, wrote it for like his kid or something. So I don't think it was ever published. It's not one of those. It was just like, okay. he wrote it. They bought the intellectual 
property to it and incorporate it into the movie kind of thing. Um, nice. But yeah, it's basically Swamp you know, Witch. cautionary tale. Yeah, Swamp Witch. Okay, so 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 he's vengeance. The he's the demon of vengeance, right? Yes. Uh, every man has uh, it's a, a a demon for each one of man's sins, and this is vengeance, right? Ed Harley is going to seek this, and so he's got to go find right. Haggis uh, out in Razorback. <laughs> no, sorry, she's not Razorback. She looks, she looks like a Haggis. Well, it's yeah. a, an appropriate name. Swamp Witch. This is a pretty cool Haggis, scene. Haggis the Swamp Witch. <laughs> right? 65 pounds of makeup and costume on her. Mm. Oh, my God. That's insane. I mean, it was a No wonder why she didn't stand up. <laughs> yeah. Just, I can't. Do you know how old the actress actually was uh, who played? 23. I do not. Okay. I don't either. I was just kind of curious because, I mean, it feels like she's an old woman, but I'm sure they've exaggerated it. There are Like scenes- a Texas Chainsaw Grandpa situation? Yeah. yeah. There are scenes early in the movie before we get like uh, full on looks at Haggis where I'm like these, you know, they shouldn't actually ever show her head on. Just always show her in profile or that her bony head with, you know, you can see through her her, like flaxen hair Yeah, (laughs) in that cabin, which is like one of the greatest uh, witch cabins maybe in all movie history. It's pretty cozy. Honestly, it was a pretty nice little cabin. I'd live there. Yeah, Yeah, you'd be comfortable there. Uh, the actress was old. She was born in 1920. So oh, she okay. was old. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. What was her name? I mean, she's she's dead now. Florence uh, Knopfler. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> you just said this so casually. I'm sorry. She's she's dead now. Yeah, she's dead now. Um, she actually died was. pretty. She actually died pretty recently. She died in uh, 2017. So she was 97 oh, wow. years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn, uh, bravo to her. Oh, so I put her like uh, what, in the 60s or something. Florence, when she made this movie? Florence Schaffler was mm. her name. Okay. May she rest. Shout Sorry. out to Florence. <laughs> yeah. The last Florence there ever was. Yeah. No, there's, I was like, there's a machine. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, this is. Well, um, what's her name in the Brady Bunch? Florence Henderson, right? Florence Henderson, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, and also the. Carol Brady. Yeah. And Plus, let's not forget Flo yeah. from, uh, you know, the, uh, what's that? Not Geico. What is she? Uh, progressive. Pro- progressive insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listeners, tell us your favorite. Uh, your favorite. Yeah. Your favorite. Florence. Your favorite flow. <laughs> you have an aunt flow, Thanks. grandma flow. Tell us. Yeah. Mine's the waitress from Dumb and Dumber. She's my favorite flow. Uh, <laughs> um, but she lives, yeah, out in the woods. And uh, Lance Hendrickson's got to go visit her. Uh, the, you know, production design there. Again, you got uh, spiders creeping all over the place and, uh, and rats Owls. and whatever. And, yeah. Oh was, yeah, good owl acting. I was slightly oh, some owl acting. I was slightly concerned at this point when he brought when he brought the kid to the swamp witch. I was like, are we having a pet cemetery thing again? I wasn't quite yeah, I sure. I thought we were kind of going there too. Yeah. I actually think this is a really good double feature with pet cemetery though. Oh, for mm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They share a lot of the same DNA. Yeah, a lot. no, there's well, you get a lot of the doing same the same things, yeah. Yeah, you get a lot of the same emotion from both movies. Yeah. For sure. And they got to go dig up the uh, the creature is actually buried out in the cemetery. It's called Pumpkinhead because it uh, is in a pumpkin patch that's also a cemetery or something that mountain folk used to bury their kin. <laughs> back and they didn't want. Yeah, back up there. And, yeah, right? But there's nothing more haunted than a pumpkin patch growing in a cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah grab, <laughs> grab that thing. If pumpkins are supposed to, like, protect us from the ghosts and all that shit, I'd get one from that graveyard. Yeah. Well, yeah. that means the pumpkin you're picking for, like, Halloween to carve, like, fed off the nutrients of, like, a dead body. Yeah. That's a haunted <laughs> pumpkin, dude. That mm, a haunted eat that, haunted that pumpkin, pumpkin pie. That pumpkin pie is going to be delicious. <laughs> is that Just cannibalism? Made, right? Because it would be dead bodies. That thing grew as yeah. dead bodies. Holy shit. That's amazing. Pumpkin pie right. cannibalism. <laughs> Taking the kid to the pumpkin patch tomorrow. There you oh, go. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, this thing is... Son, uh, there's dead people in these. <laughs> And that's why they, uh, yeah, that's why they're grinning on Halloween night, right? That's a, right. That's yeah, why that's they a, smile. Yeah. No carving necessary. Um, but I mean the uh, the the thing the basically so it's going to be blood magic, right? That's going to tie him to this. The whole whole idea here is Ed Harley wants revenge on the kids or the teens, young adults that killed his kid and wandered off. This is Middle aged revenge. women and men. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so he has to bleed a little bit. You know, you got to pay. They carry carries a, a heavy price. Yeah. Well, it's I mean, a lot. 
I was like, are you about to give the kid a transfusion? Like, what's yeah, happening? Yeah, she pokes there? him and it just comes pouring out. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah, it's got to be. For, we we for know, reals. Colin, that's how you did it. Uh-huh. Cut his yeah. palm. She like, poked him like between the knuckles. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really weird place to bleed someone out. Yeah. Colin, uh, 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 inside question Did you find that same exact knife to use for. Did you see the pe- the pestle also that like yeah, yeah I mean not intentionally but I mean obviously there was a lot of yeah I studied this movie and there's yeah a, there's no a lot shit. of it in the DNA of uh, that little film Witchfinder you can find it on YouTube um <laughs> so uh, <laughs> shameless plug <laughs> shameless plug um so basically it's the blood magic is going to bring this thing to life so he's like okay so the creature is going to get revenge for me and it's going to go out and kill these kids. Um, but that's not how it ends up working out. There is like a, cause all these time, whenever you do this kind of thing, there's always like a Faustinian bargain where you end up losing something, uh, in order to gain what you want. You may get everybody killed that you want to get killed, but it's going to cost you. Um, and in this case, it's like, and I don't know if this is a good idea or bad. I get what they're going for, but like he has, um, like these psychic visions, uh, every time the monster actually kills someone, right? So basically, he has to experience oh, the murders as if he was actually there. Oh, Colin, oh, no, you got to no. back up like 30 seconds. You, you, you froze on all of us okay. for a long time. Okay. Well, he has <laughs> to. Uh, <laughs> sorry, he has to. Uh, uh, he's going to he's going to have like these visions, right? Where he's going to have to experience all these murders like he was actually there. Right. Uh, uh-huh. And so. Right. Then the question becomes like, okay, so this is kind of like the uh, the moral of the movie, right? That there's no um, there is no easy vengeance, right? I mean, it's like no. he, it's basically the same as him having to go out and kill them himself. Yeah, yeah. Like you, like you called the order. This is on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even yeah, she. I love that she's like, did you think you could do this and not like have any blood on your hands? Like, yeah, I, I love how, and I love when he's like, God damn you, and she's like, he already has. Mm-hmm. That's such a badass line, <laughs> right? Know. Staring at a fire, just like. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie. I think the swamp witch was my favorite part of this movie. Swamp yeah, no, she's good. pretty awesome. She's One awesome. Best movie witches. Um, I love a good. I, I am glad I never witnessed her as a child, though, because she would have definitely. She would have been terrifying. Me. I'll let you know how it goes. I think I'm going to show this to the kid. Are you seriously? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not really I, a bloody I, I movie it tonight, right? I think this is uh, appropriate. It's a monster movie, so you know, you always know it's not particularly real, unless I enforce the idea that it might be. Um, because pumpkin it's really more of an atmospheric movie more than anything. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what uh, this movie shares with Superman the movie? Uh, you guys aren't big fans of Superman the movie, I guess. Jeff East. Wait, hold on. Oh, shit, I knew this. Jeff oh, East, who plays, uh, I'm not sure of his character's name. Jeff, I think he makes it all the way to the end. His name's not Jeff. Who's the, the lead guy, right, who Joel? survives? Nope, not Joel's the bad guy. Oh, Joel's the bad guy, yeah. Uh, but the the good guy, right? Who, who makes it? Him Chris? and uh, it could be Chris. That's Jeff Feast. He was the young Clark Kent in Superman the movie ten years prior oh. to this. Ah, yeah. uh, um, well, you don't have to be a big fan of Superman to. <laughs> they dubbed his voice with Chris Christopher Reeve's voice in that movie. Uh, um, right, but so it, so the kids uh, they're holed up in this cabin, which uh, Sean, I think you uh, were able to pick out. How do we know this cabin? We've seen this cabin before. <laughs> we have. This is the cabin from Friday the Thirteenth Part Four. It's the like, Jarvis I, house. It is. It's the Jarvis house. I saw like the I saw the front door and the window, and I'm just like that is set up and lit exactly like it was in Part Four. I was like, this is a Jarvis house. Good call, Sean. And after (laughs) you said that, after you said that, I was like looking closer at it. And I was like, I've been inside this in Friday the 13th, the video game. So I think you're right. Um, (laughs) That's funny. I definitely jumped through that window in that video game. Right? (laughs) That's a big window. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, well, I I don't know how many kids there are. There's like uh, four or five, right? And each one of them become our, uh, because you got to have, it becomes basically a, uh, you know, I mean, slasher movies were kind of in the in in vogue in the '80s, and so the, it kind of borrows that part from slasher movies. There's going to be a body count, right? Yes. As the monster, you got to have the the monster's got to kill somebody, and so it's going to kill all these kids. It doesn't go right after the kid who actually did it. 
um, Joel, right? He is not the mm-hmm. first victim. It actually starts picking off. The first victim is the, the kid who had the uh, remorse and stayed with the body. Steve, yeah, the one who did the most. Yeah. Yes. And this is because, like, that's why I was, th- was thinking, it's like, well, you know, because, um, you know, the pumpkin head is it brought to life by a combination of the blood of Ed Harley and his son. Uh, so maybe it's like, does it even know? It just knows that it has to go get these people. Does it know like who's responsible for what? Um, but I, you know, as the movie went on, I was thinking it's like, well, it's doing this so that, um, Joel, uh, comes to understand the consequences of the action, you know, that he's responsible for. Yeah. That you know? He's responsible, not just for this child, but his irresponsibility is also killing his friends too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because and I guess, wouldn't... Colin, now that you say that, maybe it's merciful to kill off Steve first and just kind of get it over with. And because like he does kind of like torture and play with some of the other people a bit before he kills them. Yeah. yeah. I like that. He's the one girl where he's pushing her face up against the window in the kitchen. Yeah. I was just like, wow, this is, he's really going for it. And then he yeah. shoves her head through. It's like, here you go. You drop this. <laughs> oh, they sell that one too. I when she, when that. she lands in the sink and all that blood like pours Rock. out of her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pumpkin head gets like up into a tree. Did you see that? He does. Yeah. We don't actually see him climb, but he's like, he's all nestled up in a tree, like about 50 feet off, you know? Yeah. He just throws her on a rock. Yeah. I do like the shot of the one girl when he takes her and you just see her feet going over the top of the roof. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I, la- I was just like, ah, that was yeah. funny. Giant monsters run amok. What did you think about? So the movie tries to, cause I mean, I got to tell you when I first saw this movie, it was like, okay, these are one dimensional stock, you know, horror characters that are set up basically to be irredeemable and then uh, killed off or, you know, personality free watching it now it's like okay uh the movie's 80 minutes so you know it's not really focused on character it's more focused on action and just kind of moving forward well, it's but not they focused on those characters well well that was another I thing think I, was gives, I think it gives attention to lance hendrickson in the head and yeah. lance hendrickson throughout the movie i still think it does it's like so it's like deliverance from the point of view of the uh, the mountain people kind of yeah, less rate, but yes. Yeah, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like usually Thankfully. in these yeah, movies, a lot of these films, which um, I always th- I contribute, you know, it's like Hollywood thinks, you know, basically there's the flyover states, right? There's ho- there's yeah. uh, California and there's New York and, you know, the hell with anything in between. Um, mm-hmm. So most of the movies that they usually crank out are uh you know if it comes from a studio it's usually from the point of view of like we're city people we're going into the woods and in the woods is where the crazy shit you know happens and if you go off the path in the woods you know right you're gonna run into the texas chainsaw massacre family or something like that right the wrong turn clan this is actually yeah. like uh taking the well maybe that's why i'm asking you does it split its time evenly between the city people and giving you the point of view of the uh you know um the mountain folk are just like minding their own business and then these people come in and fuck everything up and <laughs> kill their kids and all that <laughs> is it I an mean, even splitter it- uh, I, 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 I think it may be even screen time ish, but I think that's as even as it gets, there's definitely more given over to Lance Henderson and his kid and the hill people more so than the teenagers that yeah. come to town. Yeah. It's definitely I mean, I, from more from their perspective. Cause I, I mean, watching it, I had zero feelings for the city people. Like, I mean, even the ones that they didn't even really do anything wrong. Like I was like, yeah. Hey, I don't really care if they're dying. Like, I yeah, just they're supposed to. They're here to get yeah. murdered. I was like, I just want to see some cool deaths. However, like, I did see, I did have some feelings about not just Lance and his son, but also like about the little boy that was trying to help. Like, I, I thought that they had some dimension to them. But yeah, the city here because I was like, I don't give a shit. Kill them all. I don't care. I mean, this whole movie takes place over what, like, twelve to sixteen hours max. Yeah. Something, yeah, like, something that. like that, but it's so we're saying, and I think that's intentional then that it's, uh, it's empathies clearly lie with the, with the mountain people. I mean, that's, yeah, yes. sure. but okay. So, so that's why I'm saying that it felt 
to me like that you know you had one dimensional you know stock characters they're just dealing with the horror of the situation that they're in and we don't really get you know a lot of empathy for them before they're killed but they do try to do something here especially with the character of joel right um because there is this idea that they try to establish that as time goes on and he has time to ruminate on what he has done that eventually he does come to the point of point you know that where he's like i need to take responsibility for this right that also happens to be right when pumpkin head shows up and so then you know right. basically your life is over from this point on it's too late yeah, you know you should have done should have came to this like right away you're a bad person yeah. because you didn't immediately think outside of yourself <laughs> you're like mm-hmm. no it's all just about protecting me uh and away he goes i'm not sure what else that other, that guy has been in john diacchino he looked really that. familiar well i think uh steve is the only one who's been like he's got some horror bona fides i think he was in uh slumber party massacre 2 slaughterhouse and possibly the movie that only dom Cree would know killer workout I think he's a star. <laughs> killer workout. Killer workout. Movie about the killer gym or whatever the hell is going on in that movie. Still haven't seen it. Sorry, Dom. Um, <laughs> I mean, a movie about a killer gym. If it's not, I don't think it's that, <laughs> that, that scene from Final Destination Three. Then I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that some praise for Final Destination Three? It's some praise for that insane scene in the gym. Yeah, that one's pretty the good. Absolute insanity of that scene. Yeah. Um, sorry. So as we're bringing it to the, uh, the close of the movie, then, um, how do you defeat pumpkin head? I mean, like this thing's out running around. Lance Henderson doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. After he like realizes that he's experiencing the, the murders, like, yes. he feels extremely responsible for it. And I assume this is something, is this different than the other people who have summoned the demon in the past? I don't know. We don't really see past demon to go like dig it out of the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Because did they ever try to stop it? We get the impression maybe in the past it was like, you know, it just went after one person and not like a whole bunch of them. So that's why Lance Henriksen, because there's like five, he's going to kill five people, you know, it's like, by the time you get to like number three, it's like, Oh my God, what have I done? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Lance Mm -hmm. Henriksen's wearing some buck teeth in this movie, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Very distracting. A little bit. I mean, it kind of you yeah. know fits with the hill people, but yeah, yeah, he does. And it wasn't necessary. It just gives him a kind of a, a little bit of a different look. It's an actor choice. Uh, Lance it gives Henriksen. him a kind of goofier look, but. Well, we would all know Lance Henriksen, of course, from past experience, uh, past uh, appearances on the Saturday Night Freak Show. He is a wall of famer. I believe this makes maybe five times that he's been on our show. Uh, we've covered his movies. Do you know what mm. they are? Mm. 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 Okay, he was the wow, king. What? He was the king in uh, Super Mario. Brothers. Super Mario remember, Brothers, right? Remembers that. <laughs> love those. Love those plumbers. <laughs> he picked up a hitchhiker at the end of uh, Jennifer's body, which we did. Right. Oh, yeah. um, he was also okay. in Near Dark. We did Near Dark. Ah, uh, yes. And I think that we did one other Lance Henriksen movie, and I apologize, I don't have the... Uh, I was going to say, I don't think I was here for any of them, but I was here for all of them. Were you? <laughs> well, you weren't here for Near Dark, though. Yeah, no, oh. I was. Yes, you was. Oh, you were. That's right. That was very recent that we did Near Dark. Okay. You well, say that, but that was probably like two years ago. Yeah, but I was yeah. here for it. Right, right, right. Yeah, she was here. Well, I was gonna let it's me let me uh, was two years ago. Let me consult the wall here that uh, we've built up. We got uh, hold on. Like, oh, yes. Please hey, go over. look at the wall. And speaking of other people on the wall, Buck Flower is in this movie. That's right. Well, Lance Henderson. Wait, it says on the wall he was also a man's best friend, which Michaela was also here for. Oh, I brought that. <laughs> I brought that. Michaela's <laughs> like it would have been. It would have been funnier if <laughs> Michaela had brought all of the Lance Henderson movies. I'm just like I. I know none of them. I was like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and you brought half of them. I mean, the dude's been in a lot of movies. A yeah. lot. That's true. But George Buck Flower, he may be approaching uh, like some kind of rarefied. He's breathing the rarefied Uh-oh. air on Saturday Night Free Show. at the top of the mountain. That's right. You want me to tell you the movies that he's in? We'll count them off. You ready? Go. That mo- movies that we've done. So you can go back in our back catalog and check out Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS. Back to the Future. 
Maniac Cop, Mac and Me. It was a security guard, Mac and Me. They live. Back to the Future Part Two, Village of the Damned. Oh, and now Pumpkinhead. Was he not in Back to the Future Part Three? Did we do? I don't know if he was. Apparently, according to MF Man, the Keeper of the Wall, he was not. But I don't recall. I guess if he was, he might not have been. Okay. Yeah, he was the bum on the on the park bench. Wait, 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 eight? You're saying? Eight Eight. for George Buck Flower. May he rest. Uh, You've seen this guy in tons of John Carpenter movies. Uh, Have we not done uh, Big Business yet? He was in that, too. We've not brought that to the freak show. He's usually a bum or a drunk. Yeah. Almost always. Or a drunk bum. There you go. Yeah. I'm the president. Uh, since I got this thing, I'm I'm the president. That's Escape from New York. Sorry, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, we did Escape from L.A. Of course, because that's what Sean would choose. He would choose Escape from L.A. Not yeah, Escape and from New York. Um, you want to fight about it? <laughs> all right. Give so, it up for off, Mike. <laughs> so the uh, the the but the climax of this movie basically sets us up where the only way to defeat Pumpkinhead, um, it turns out, you know, he's going to try and burn him alive with his uh, uh, introduce the Chekhov's flamethrower that's introduced at the very beginning of the movie. Uh-huh. He's going to try and burn him, but the flames have no effect, and it wouldn't because he's a demon. He comes from hell, right? He's going to sell him, yeah, send exactly. him back to whatever hell he come from. How do you kill Pumpkinhead? I don't think we all realize he's connected to. Lance Henriksen, mm-hmm. because he looks like so you got to you got to you got to kill the reason you got to kill the reason uh, for yeah. him for Pumpkinhead being there. You got to destroy the Horcrux, basically. Either the reason well, he's there I mean, is to. But what would happen if you just let him finish his quest? I think he'd go away. Yeah, okay. I think he'd finish. We don't know because no movie's ever done it. Yeah, unless they do it in Blood um, Wings, Bl- uh, Pumpkinhead Two. Don't do it in any of the sequels. It doesn't happen in any of the sequels. How many sequels are there? Only are two there? Of these movies. There's four movies. What? <laughs> yeah. I did not even know that. All right, so- there is Blood Wings. <laughs> there's Ashes to Ashes, and then there is Blood Feud from 2007. Oh no, these sound bad. Okay, so for for <laughs> reference, so for reference, Blumhouse, you know what you have to do in your remake. Mm-hmm. He has to complete yeah. his mission. Let him finish the quest. Yeah. <laughs> and see what happens. And we're going to hold, hold think, their feet uh, to the flame on that, Holly. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. Right? I was like, all right, that would warrant a movie. Well, but I think once once the quest is over, I think whoever the quest is being done for gets taken too. Like, see, yeah. I think, this is, I think see, he this goes is, back and takes him with. This is exactly why price. this is exactly why I was getting Sleepy Hollow vibes because that's the same plot of Sleepy Hollow as they whoever holds the head is is in control of, you know, Headless Horseman and he takes whoever he's set to take and then if you get in his way he takes you too and then at the end he takes the person who had his head to begin with. Like this mm-hmm. is it's it's very similar. Well, Haggis tells Lance Henriksen, it's like, you know, because he's like, well, you know, I'll go stab him myself. She's like, and you'll die. And he's like, fine, then I'll die. And she's like, all the sooner. Because basically that's the price that he's going to have to pay for his yeah. vengeance yeah. is he's going to have to die. Um, so we find out by him sticking himself or shooting himself, he can, that's how he, he killed. Oh, yeah. He gets caught on the, on the fork, on the pitchfork. Yeah. How, and okay. He, and you how see did this happen? Pumpkinhead. Because he like walked into it and it's, he wasn't running. He walked like turned a corner and got poked by it. But it was like, what, five inches deep in him? Yeah. Have you ever, and maybe this is just me, have you ever just walked into a doorway? <laughs> doorway like, I've, walked I've never into walked doorways. into something that impaled me that deep. I've walked into doorways pretty fucking hard. Like, I've never been impaled by anything, but yeah, I've I, walked into some shit. I yeah. think I'd be the guy who gets impaled on the on the pitchfork yeah. to tell you the truth. That deep though, okay, but to be walking that slow and for it to penetrate that deep, yeah, it was, a, it was um, he I had a pendulum effect going on there. Fuck. It was a pendulum effect because he his uh, flamethrower belt got stuck on the door because he was having a vision and he like tilted uh, and he got caught on a nail and it like sw- it, pun- it pendulumed him right into yeah. a, a pitchfork. That's why you don't <laughs> turn your pitchforks stick it straight up. It's dangerous farmers. Right. It's, dangerous this is the same, stuff. Yeah. it's the same idea with knives in a dishwasher. You got to put yeah. that shit down. That's right. Exactly it. Yeah. If the movies have taught us <laughs> nothing, I mean, those are the dangers of uh, yeah. yes. Having- that sounds like a final death. Sean, knives upright in a dishwasher. Right. No, I always put the knives <laughs> facing up in the dishwasher. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. then, right then, then you get garden stated. 
Oh, <laughs> where you that trip means... over the open dishwasher door yeah. and then you get the yellow <laughs> knives. Whoops. <laughs> Garden state and the ultimate dishwasher kill. <laughs> Well, it doesn't end up well for Ed Harley. I assume because at the end of the movie that we see after he dies, Pumpkinhead uh, burns. Uh, we do see Hag is taking a, a desiccated body, which and, he, and throwing it in the grave and covering it up. This is going to be the next Pumpkinhead, but it has the um, necklace that he, uh, that uh, Ed Harley's kid made for him. So it's like, oh, that's Ed Harley. So then this is kind of fascinating, right? It's like the the Pumpkinhead creature, the demon actually doesn't have a physical appearance. It is a thing possessing a human body and, and changing it into this, you know, uh, thing yeah. once it possesses it. Um, mm. but yeah, it actually is like a demon Southern summoned from the netherworld to just possess whoever called it last. Uh, yeah. I like that. It, uh, I like its little burst into flames thing where yeah. you just, it's an, it's a cool pullback and then just, it's, it's yeah. like the, uh, uh, the little demon pastor in Beetlejuice. How he just flames up and goes away. It was a pretty good effect. I'm like, there's somebody off there with like a lighter or something. <laughs> Set yep. the thing up and let Do it go. Do you, Beetle? Yeah. Well, the sequels that uh, Michaela was talking about, Blood Wings 2, or uh, sorry, Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings was uh, released mm -hmm. direct to video. There's a video game tie-in for uh, Pumpkinhead Blood Wings 2 that you can probably go find on the uh, old 386, 486 computer software i'm not even sure what it was for um the the following two ashes to ashes and blood feud were made for the sci-fi channel and both of them star lance henrickson and uh he came back and did a cameo appearance and apparently hates it so much that he's embarrassed and has publicly said oh, wow that those were so shitty he's the ghost of ed harley in those movies oh no oh, god yeah oh no do i have to watch these movies <laughs> Shit. We know you will. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Do they make a pumpkin head four pack that you can pick up there, Sean? I don't think so. I've never seen I don't you don't see much unless it's coming from Shout Factory, you don't see much, and they've only done the first two. Yeah. I don't think there's ever this not even that discount like Walmart for pumpkin heads. So who knows how the rights are even used in that series. They're just probably trying to forget them because uh we should. Probably. probably. I, I, I mean, yeah, I've never seen past the first one because I'm like, I just want to remember it the way that it was <laughs> and not uh, pollute it with the second one. Because I think they say the second one, it's like it is a guy in a suit or something like that. I mean, the uh, the puppeteer, it's not Stan Winston's crew. I don't. Right. Think, yeah. Uh, but um, there you go. I remember liking it, but that was years ago. Mm. So who mm. knows? Well, um, we'll find out next year. When I bring pumpkin head Next for Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, there yeah. you go. All right. Well, listener, uh, we've been hedging our bets. We haven't told you whether or not we would actually recommend that you watch the movie Pumpkin Head, but we're going to tell you. But first of all, we're going to have to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Hey, thank you, Igor. It's a little taller today. He's on. Who does his face that. start to look like? Which one of you is Igor taking on the facial Aww. appearance? Of? Igor's oh, I, think, us. I think it's Tom. He's our little vengeance demon. I think he looks like Tom. He just comes <laughs> in. He's like, B team. B team. <laughs> and he just runs off. B team. <laughs> uh, well, uh, um, gone a really time. well, before we uh, hop into mailbag, I want to tell you that uh, MF mad, the keeper of the wall also said that chance. Michael Corbett is on the wall for tonight's movie. Chance. Michael Corbett's an actor who played laddie in the lost boys, which we did. He was, uh, young ed harley in the cold open of Pumpkinhead, and he was also the newspaper kid in the rocketeer and also oh, nice. the quote-unquote actor in the movie that plays gypsy the dog also played barney in gremlins and his real name is mushroom and he was a nice good boy. that's a great name so there you go that's who our yeah, uh, documentary dog name that's right. Somebody's keeping track, right? We're putting for the uh, animal. Yeah, this is the famous animals bios. of Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, so we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us and join in the freak show experience. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. 
Facebook.com slash Sci Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Pumpkinhead, Travis Legler writes in and says, Now here's a freak show movie. Stan Winston's first time directing, and he pulls off a good cult horror movie. The scene with the guy hiding in the closet, and the pumpkin head gets in close and pulls back the clothes and gets right in his face. Still gets a jump out of me to this day. I can't wait for Sean to bring Pumpkinhead 2 blood wings. <laughs> God damn it. Have I become that predictable? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to fuck with all of you on my next pick. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'll believe it when I see it. You say that, and then something else is going to possess you. That's yeah. very true. I, and I don't know what fucking with you guys would equal as far as a movie pick. I don't know. I don't know anymore. <laughs> well, all right. Well, Michael Whitaker says Pumpkinhead's a great monster movie. One of the few I still remember seeing commercials for when I was a kid. Lance Henriksen drives around with his dead son longer than is probably necessary. And the kids yeah. responsible <laughs> for the boy's death all look about 30. Not unlike Tremors, this has continued on longer on home video than you think it would. And there's something like four sequels, but this one holds up. Yeah, yeah. that's a good yeah. comparison. Yeah, I've never seen any of the sequels. Yeah, I know. That's right. You, sh- you probably shouldn't. We'll leave it up to Sean to uh, yeah, I'll to watch them and let, her, let us know. Chris Harkey <laughs> writes in and says the main character changes his mind so fast. It's not like he made a rash decision in the moment. It took him all day and most of the night to conjure the thing and to change his mind in a matter of minutes. <laughs> but I thought it was a fun movie. But wow, that was frustrating. Yeah. Oh, you know, well, he's killing people. You know, it's like that changes the person's perspective when you're actually there. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Owen Johnson Murder. says, uh, I love the movie. First time I watched it was on IFC late in the night. I was alone and my family were all out and rocked my shit. And in the end, I thought <laughs> the witch was carrying Lance Henriksen's son made it feel more uncomfortable. Later, I figured out it was Lance Henriksen and not his son that she was burying in the pumpkin patch. But I feel it would have been creepier if it was his son being buried, not him. Ooh. I mean, it made I more sense th- this way. I thought it was um, what was left over, like after the pumpkin had burned, like after you, if you cleared the ashes, yeah. I feel like this is the thing you pull out of there. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's what you're supposed to again. think until you see that necklace. And that's like, right. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Nick Siebel says Pumpkinhead is such an underrated movie. I saw it for the first time last Halloween. The way they set up the father and son relationship, it was really genuine, really tugged at the heartstrings once the son died. Stan Winston was so overlooked as a director, and it's a great film. Uh, yeah, solid. Joe Lohoho says, I love Pumpkinhead, scariest witch ever. Yeah. There you go. She's awesome. Um, about last week's movie, which was M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. Matthew Ola says, I just watched it in preparation for your podcast. And I found it to be a pretty cool movie. I knew about the twist going in, though. Yeah, that's well, some good stuff. Two yeah. weeks ago, we watched a movie called Offerings. That was Sean's fault. Brent Williams says, I just <laughs> caught up with the podcast. Okay, so Brent Williams here is going to help us out with a question that we had when we watched offerings. You remember what the hell are ground squirrels? They're going to go hunting ground squirrels or like what the fuck is a ground squirrel? Well, Brett says ground squirrels are a group of the squirrel family that are primarily terrestrial instead of arboreal. Locally, you'll see the, Eastern chipmunk in your backyard in grasslands. You'll see the 13 line ground squirrel. They're quite small. I don't know why anybody would hunt them except to be cruel. However, there are other members of the group, such as the larger marmots, like the American groundhog, that's the woodchuck, or the prairie dog. Or maybe they would call those ground squirrels too. I don't know. So there you go. Ground squirrel is like a chipmunk I'm going with. That's what I'm getting out of this. And they don't like climb a- trees. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got to clear them out like weevils. Maybe they, like they, a, they eat like shit. Like a gopher? Well, that's maybe? what we were saying on the show, but um, he's saying more like a chipmunk. Well, I know, but a, okay. a gopher, a gopher is about the size of a chipmunk. They're they're about this big. Who knows? Well, that's what we were. Yeah, I don't know who knows, but they're hunting them in the movie offerings which took place in oklahoma dennis peck says if you mix offerings with the first sorority house massacre you have a carbon copy of halloween fan edit question mark i I suppose that would be (laughs) and uh aaron flo says i can't help but mention that the mask he's talking about the visage of the killer the for the figured killer in offerings looks like tucker carlson it does 
Holy shit. <laughs> That's same haircut and everything. Holy shit. <laughs> so there you go. Well, thank you all for writing. That, that in. movie is doubly horrifying now. <laughs> and now we're going to go around the table and we're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Pumpkinhead, starting Colin! with. Oh, shit. Colin gets to go first tonight. Colin, what did you think of Pumpkinhead? I'm in the hot seat. Hot seat. Um, I love this type of movies. This is uh, American folk folklore, right? I see a lot of British folklore movies, uh, mm. but there's not like a whole lot of, it feels like to me, uh, American folklore horror movies, um, because I think you have to do that kind of, you know, it's a, it's a Hollywood movie, but it feels like a regional movie because it, it, like we were saying, it takes the perspective of the folks who actually live there. And then these interlopers come in, but it has the, um, the feel to me of like a fairy tale. And I think mm. that's also important to like folklore, right? It's like, it's got to have, it has a, a moral, which um, is, you know, for the one kid, it's like, you know, you have to you have to face what you did and the fact that you didn't uh, own up to and take responsibility for your own actions. Right. You're causing all this death and destruction around you for Ed Harley, uh, because he's not taking responsibility for the, the the vengeance, you know, that he's got out there working in his name. He's causing all this uh, death, destruction and ultimately his own uh, downfall. So, I mean, it's a tragedy. Um I don't know. I mean, are we reading too much into what is generally considered one of the most fun movies of the 80s? God damn, I miss the 80s because it seemed like we were getting awesome horror movies all the time that weren't carbon copies of each other. It was like, yeah, like a variety of shit, like just different stuff. Yeah, I mean, I know that, like, yeah, okay, Freddy Krueger set off, like, a bunch of copycats, but everybody tried to spin that off and do something weird and different. They weren't all a ghost in a house movies. Like, you got the the James Wan uh, ghost in the house movie, or you got the paranormal activity ghost in the house movie. Maybe you got your saw in there a little bit, you know, but uh, everything kind of has that same, like, everything feels the same in the 80s. It was like... You know, yeah, you had your slasher films, but then you had like really weird swing for the fences, nutso stuff. And Pumpkinhead is one that stands out because it's, uh, you know, like a singular kind of movie. Um, I guess I didn't think all that highly of it back then because there was so much stuff coming out, you know, uh, now it's like, you know, the perspective of time, you look back on it and you're like, you know, that's, a um, an original thing, you know, with an original creature, um, that I think is, you know, stood the test of time. Just, it, it looks really cool. It functions cool. It's got a cool mystique and mythology. Um, it's got the movie itself has a great look. Um, it has, uh, you know, the performances, I think, you know, Lance Sanderson very intense and in anything you put him in, but he's, you know, the thing that, uh, holds the whole thing together. Uh, yeah, I would 100% recommend Pumpkinhead. It's a great, especially it's time of year. Um, it was on my list, Mikhail, and I'm, I'm glad you picked it. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, Pumpkinhead, you got to watch it. Uh, four stars. Uh, let's go with, uh, Sean. Ah, um, <clears throat> Michaela, because we didn't get monsters last week. Is that why you picked this this week? You're just like, fuck it. I didn't get them. We're having monsters. <laughs> no, I've had this on my list for a while. Having a really good fall atmosphere, so I was saving it for my October pick. Gotcha. It it really is a good fall movie. Like there's leaves blowing everywhere in this thing. Um, it's uh, uh, I was surprised. Uh, I had not seen this one. Like I said before, just part two. Um, so it's good to you know it's good to know where it all comes from. Um, I really had a good time with Pumpkinhead. I love I love creature movies and i love practical effects and uh this is uh, like colin said this is one that's to the test of time like i've always known of the pumpkin head monster even if i haven't seen all the movies um and there's a reason why because they um they use it effectively i mean stan winston builds a creature odds are it's going to stand the test of time um and it he really did a good job with this movie um um that's it's just a cool monster the stuff they do with it is really good i like that um, I mean, you know, Stan Winston and his effects team created this monster. So they like, they know how to shoot it. You know, you're not just building something and handing it off to someone else to shoot it. And I think when that happens, that's when you get, you know, that's when you get sneakers in the shot with the monster costume, and all that stuff. Um, but I think them coming from this uh, effects background, um, they know how to shoot this monster to its full potential. Um, I think it comes across very well in this movie. Um, I like the story. 
Um, they did some good setup with Lance Hendrickson and the Sun. Um, that's some good. Um, it's good setup. Like we said, it's a tragedy, which helps. I think Lance Henderson's character, because we're not like, he's not the bad guy in the movie. Yes. He's summoned the monster and all that stuff. Um, and he's kind of responsible for all the death and everything, but you know, he feels um, the, he ends up feeling that that's wrong. Um, and so I think the tragedy of the getting of his son getting killed really helps for his character and how it all comes to an end. Um, yeah. It's just, it's a good movie. It's a quick movie. It's fun. Uh, great creatures and stuff. It, uh, like I said, looks real good. Love the color palette. Um, yeah. I mean, there's no reason to not watch this movie. It's like, and it's like the perfect time, like watch it now. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I recommend Pumpkinhead. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty great and uh, I'll definitely watch it again. Uh, Holly, your thoughts uh, on Pumpkinhead. Yeah. I, you know, going into a movie like this where it has such an iconic character and it's been so long since it came out, um, and I managed to just really not know a whole lot about the actual movie. I recognized the character, but I, um, I really didn't know anything going into it. So it's very easy to have that kind of setup where you end up being disappointed. And this movie definitely delivered. It gave me everything that I expected and everything I wanted from it. It had, um, you know, like you said before, we, we really did get a lot of exposure to the creature throughout the movie. We got a lot of screen time with it. And I loved that. It didn't ruin anything for me. I thought it was. I thought it was great. I thought it was great that we got to see so many, uh, so many different angles and so many different um, types of shots of the creature. It was. It was really cool. Um, it definitely worked for me. It did not disappoint. It was cool. It was. It was creepy looking. Um, and like you said, this movie had some amazing Halloween vibes. Just like opening opening sequence we get like that spooky scarecrow in the cornfield and all the, like the the fog and it was just halloween from start to finish which i loved um and also i am so mad that you stole my halloween pick michaela i'm so mad but it was totally worth it i i really did enjoy it um yeah i don't really have anything bad to say about it like this movie is fun it's it's a good time um yeah, I really like Pumpkinhead. It was it lived up to its its uh, its reputation. I can see why it's stood the test of time, and it's still a Halloween classic. It's still a horror classic. I definitely recommend it. It's it's definitely got rewatchability too. I think it's a a fun one to add to the Halloween, the annual Halloween watch list. You know, so yeah, definitely recommend. Michaela, bring us home. To say i'm kind of disappointed with our listeners because only like four or five people wrote in about this movie and that tells surprised. and if you guys haven't seen watching this movie but this just kind of proves my point that the, the respect it deserves because if we, we didn't get 20 i i love this movie i mean it shares a lot of it can be surprising that i like uh, I always love a movie when they have the balls to kill a kid. So <laughs> right yeah. off the bat, it won me over with that. Um, <laughs> and they spared the dog, too. They killed the kid, and I appreciate that. Um, For sure. Yeah, I agree with the, like everything you guys are saying. Beautiful production design, beautiful cinematography that holds up, and they're not afraid to show it. Um, it knows and get out. It doesn't overstay its welcome at all. It is 80s, and that is all it needs to be. And I wish more movies nowadays would just um, it, it story in 86 minutes and I don't feel like I'm missing anything it's it's the perfect run uh, shame people ignore this movie and forget about this movie no one ever talks about this movie a drive-ins never show this movie everyone pretends like it doesn't exist and it frustrates <laughs> drive-ins show this with Pets <laughs> and Jerry show it with something this is a beautiful movie like I mean I love the Halloween movies but I'm not Halloween movie does not have a good fall atmosphere and it does not get me in the mood for Halloween because everything is green and this movie has lightning and wind blowing and leaves and fog and cemeteries and pumpkins like this is much more of a fall movie so you are a bad horror fan and you are <laughs> a disservice if you are not promoting this movie Damn. <laughs> pumpkin head play the smackdown <laughs> go watch pumpkin hard recommend 
Yeah, you get that feeling every once in a while. They're like, man, nobody talks about, you know, some great, you know, like, you don't really hear, like, people they talk about, like, Reanimator or Return of the Living Dead anymore. It's like, those ones feel like they're kind of slipping off. I mean, we just mm-hmm. do Halloween and the thing and, you know, <laughs> stuff yep. like that over and over again. It's like, there are other things out there that, you know, you got you to gotta remember these are there. Right. The 80s were made up of more than the thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. That's a uh, unanimous <laughs> recommend for Pumpkinhead. Yes. So that means next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. Colin, come on. It's the Halloween pick. What, what, what are you bringing? It's a Halloween pick. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go old school. We're going real old school. I'm going to do classic Ooh. horror, and we're going to try and put Vincent Price, uh, horror star, on the Wall of Fame. We haven't done three Vincent Price movies yet. This is going to be the third. Wow. We're going to do his Roger Corman movie. The Haunted Palace. Uh, and that's okay. going to be All right. next week. And it is, right now anyway, free on Amazon Prime. If you Woo-hoo! jinx it now, Colin. You jinx <laughs> I know, I know. Next right week, now. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so- <laughs> Colin, if you were about to say, and it's available free on the same app we watch offerings on. Yeah, no. Yeah, this one you can actually get like a decent copy in it. Uh, yeah. So uh, that'll be next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.